on reviewing A Kitchen Daughter by Jill McHenry. So yeah, so as I was saying, one of the um, secrets that comes out of the family closet is um, the prospect, possibility of um, Autism being more in the family, not just with Ginny, but the possibility of her sister's daughter, Shannon, having it. And as I was saying, her sister researched was researching into autism, specifically Asperger's, um, because she was concerned about her daughter. But then when she read about Asperger's, she thought that it, it fitted um, Ginny's profile. It, sorry, it fit, not fit, it doesn't make grammatical sense. It fit um, Ginny's profile. Um, but when she mentioned it to Ginny, Ginny got really defensive because Ginny just thought, oh, I just have a personality. Um, whenever, that's how Ginny described her issues, um, as having a personality, um, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, but then when Ginny, um, later tried to tell her sister that Shannon might be autistic, um, G uh, Ginny's sister got quite angry because it's almost like her sister, although her sister suspected that Shannon might be autistic in the first place, that's why in the first place she started reading into it, when it was kind of brought to her attention by Ginny, um, you know, in black and white, as it were, um, her sister then got really angry herself, so denial was working both ways. Ginny was in denial, like, didn't want to face the fact she might be autistic, and her sister was also in denial over the possibility of her daughter being autistic, Shannon, Ginny's niece. And also what emerges um, throughout the story is that Ginny's father, too, was autistic, because her father, um, her father's ghost appeared when Ginny cooked up one of her father's recipes, um, and he told Ginny that... Um, about his own difficulties, and um, there was um, there was a message. His father had left a message for her mother um, that Ginny discovered, um, saying um, that uh, asking for her mother's forgiveness. And Ginny wasn't sure what this was about. Why was her father asking for her mother's forgiveness? And it turns out when Ginny conjured up the ghost of her father, that um, her father wanted forgiveness over giving Ginny his problems, kind of thing. Um, like he was worried that Ginny would grow up having the same, facing the same problems as he had and he was worried for Ginny's future but her father had become quite successful and was a surgeon working in a hospital and uh, this made Ginny kind of feel good because it implied that even though her father had a condition that it doesn't mean you can't achieve stuff sort of thing um, because I think one of the things um, in the story that uh, just kind of irritated me quite a lot but uh, I'd hate to have a sister like this is that her sister Amanda really kind of like treated Ginny almost as though she was a child and didn't give her any autonomy or anything, was like trying to make all the decisions for her. And Ginny's mum had done that as well. Ginny's mum had been incredibly protective and had treated Ginny like a child, kind of like to the extent of, of not even allowing her to go out on her own, to the extent of needing to be, of not even allowing Ginny to be in her own room alone. Um, I was like thinking, come on. <laughs> um, I could relate to Ginny's character in a sense that she came across... Um, it was good that um, the portrayal was of someone who I could relate to in a sense that Ginny was leading a space shelter life, you know, obviously she wasn't capable of work, she was, you know, an, an adult woman, but essentially very kind of like nervous of the world and kind of like um, wrapped up in her own world, which obviously is very relatable. Um, so often portrayals of autism or either of those who are really severely, um, you know, so severely disabled at one end or those who are like extremely able at the other, or like the savants. You don't often see people in the middle um, who are like disabled and really struggling, but like not like savants, but at the same time, you know, um, ver um, verbal and kind of basically a bit like me. Um, and I felt that, yeah, Jenny was similar to that. But um, I, I did feel though that maybe some of Jenny's problems as well came from her overprotective parent and her sister not allowing her any choices or autonomy and treating her like a child which I think can kind of add an extra layer onto the disability in my case thankfully um I, I was never as overprotected as that I mean you know <laughs> my parents didn't let me out and stuff um I think my mum was quite protective of me um I think probably all parents are quite protective of children that have issues even if the condition hasn't yet been diagnosed as I say, I wasn't diagnosed until I was like 21, I think. But if a parent obviously knows that their child, say, isn't quite conventional and has like issues, I think it's natural maybe for parents to be a bit protective of that. 
but like if there comes a point when it does add an extra layer onto a disability and I think in Ginny's case maybe some of her extreme reticence at dealing with the outside world possibly was as a consequence of maybe her mother's extreme kind of like protectiveness um, which is just taking it to another level as I say I'm glad uh, my mum wasn't as protective as that because that would just, that would just be stifling um, but yeah that was interesting um, so yeah, I love to get food references. There's lots of food references in the book, which is obviously the best bit, I think. Uh, thinking about food helps Ginny cope at her parents' funeral because it's her special interest. So she'll think about food. She also seems to have some kind of synesthesia. In Ginny's case, um, when people speak, um, it's at, it, 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 in her sort of... It, 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 it has a kind of sensory reference to food. So she talks about someone having, say, an orange juice voice. Or something like that, which maybe thinks she might have a type of synesthesia, maybe. Um, she she says that one of the reasons why she likes cooking so much is that um, it provides cooking provides a rhythm. You know, you've got like a instruction and clear steps, and she loves the rhythm involved in cooking. And I can completely relate to that. That's probably part of the reason why I'm so into cooking. Is that it's very systematic. And also, I think, you know, being autistic, you are a bit more into that kind of systematic way of thinking, maybe. And, um, yeah, with cooking, there are these very clear steps, you know, it's very logical. It's a procedure that you follow. It's quite scientific in a way, kind of like alchemy. Um, and I can relate to that as probably one of the reasons. I think why I like cooking, because it is very scientific. I mean, I've always enjoyed cooking ever since I was a young child, you know. You know, really kind of like turning something into something, you know, is quite a kind of scientific thing. Um, and so as I say, um, so yeah, her cooking makes her hallucinate Granny back into the room in the first chapter. Um, <laughs> interestingly, I'm going to finish in a moment so this video doesn't come out. I'm so going to have to come back to this next week because there's so much I want to say about this video, um, this book. But on I'll just finish with this. On page 15, she says, May, Jenny says, maybe I would get along with everyone if I only saw them for three hours once a week. My mother and my sister, they were always around too much. Um, I can so relate to that quote because, um, yes, absolutely. Um, it, you know, it is, it is about how often you're with someone. I do find that the longer I'm with someone, the more likely it is that cracks are going to emerge in a relationship, the more likely it is that there's going to be some kind of meltdown in a relationship, um, that people are going to, I'm not going to be able to hack it anymore, that I'm going to break or say something stupid or end up annoying someone because there's only a certain amount of time I can kind of like control myself. Um, like, and I think that's, yeah, I can completely relate to that because I think, you know, and obviously I only see my support work or I did before for COVID thing for, um, how long did I see her? I saw her for, actually I saw her for six hours a week. Um, and then I, I had my outing once every month and that was a whole day. Um, but I think it's a bit different with the support worker though because it's not really a reciprocal relationship, it's kind of more structured, it's a kind of, um, uh, almost quite an artificial relationship in a way, so I'm not sure that really counts, but certainly with more kind of like casual relationships, I can't be with anyone for that length of time, no, probably with say an hour max before things start to go a bit topsy-turvy, so I could really relate to that. Okay, so I'm going to finish now, I want to come back to this review next week because there's so much I want to say, talk about this kitchen, the Kitchen Daughter book. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this review and do let me know your comments below if any of you have read this book or if you think you might read it, um, do let me know. So thank you for watching.